Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. So today's video was going to be installing the 5700G uh, Ryzen 7 uh, into a motherboard. Uh, that's kind of gone uh, the other way uh, because I ran into some problems which resulted in needing a BIOS update. So because I haven't done a BIOS update of this type before, that's what, the vis that's what this video is now going to be. So we're going to flash the BIOS without a motherboard, or sorry, without uh, memory, without a CPU, or even a hard drive. It is recommended remove everything um, that interacts with it. If you've got USBs in it, take them out. Only use the 8-pin for power, your 24-pin for power. Plug those in. That's all you need to do. Make sure your power supply is powered off. And then you are going to go in. I'm going to show you where to get the uh, file at for this particular motherboard. Now it's the B550, uh, MSI B550 Tomahawk motherboard. Okay, it's this specific one. So I'm going to, I'll have a link in the description uh, for where to go. Uh, but you can always just go to MSI.com and just search it out. It's easy, to, pretty easy to find. But anyway, let's get on, show you that part, and I'll show you all the ins and outs of how this all went. Okay, so when you're flashing your uh, BIOS, uh, first you got to find out where the BIOS file's at. So on the top up here, you can see this is the Canadian website, so msi.com. So it takes you directly to where you need to be. Go down to the website, find your motherboard, and then click on support. Once you've done that, you're going to have the BIOS down here. Click on where it says BIOS, and now you're going to have... Uh, the beta version, which supports Windows 11 and update the whatever this is. And then it has the non-beta version. The recommended one is the non-beta version, just in case uh, there's any problems with the beta version. Okay, just keep that in mind. I used the beta version, worked fine, but your situation may vary. So use the one down here just to be on the safe side. I'm going to use this one, but the choice is yours. So click on the download button. First, make sure you have a USB uh, in your drive ready to go. So when you go to your drive, let me quickly show you this. So my USB drive here, go in, right click on it, go format, and you're gonna, it's gonna be NTFS. You wanna choose FAT32 default. And allocation unit size, choose default allocation size, and click on start. It's going to warn you, you're going to lose all your data when you format it. So if you got anything on there, make sure you back it up first. Otherwise, it's gone. Click OK. It's going to complete the format. Shouldn't take more than a few seconds. And it comes up and tells you everything is good to go. Click OK. Close. Now you can begin your download. I'm going to click this one, as I said. And it's going to download the file. So you're going to open it up. That folder, you can put it on your desktop. I do it differently. So I'm just going to double click it. Because that's the file I want right there. And I am just simply going to drag it onto my USB drive. So you can do copy and paste will work as well. So just drag it down, drop it. And it's going to copy the file over. Okay. Won't take very long, it's uh, not a very big file. Once that's done, you're good to go. One more step you're going to need to do though. So don't just assume it's all good at this point. Watch the whole video. Lots of information. Skip it. Well, and that could be on you if something goes wrong. Okay, once you've got that on your USB drive, so click your USB drive, it's on here. You're going to right click and you're going to need to rename it. So all in caps, MSI dot ROM. Get rid of everything else. That's all you want it to say, MSI dot ROM in capital letters. Don't ask me why, that's just the way it is. It's going to ask you if you want to change it. It might make it unusable. If you don't change it, it won't work. So say yes. And then once we've got this, we're going to take our USB drive out put it into our system, and we're going to start the flash pro process. Okay, so we started our system up. 
could not get a boot to the BIOS and turns out I need a BIOS update. So just in case the flashing of the BIOS does not work, I do have a backup uh, AMD um, Ryzen 3600 that I can use and do it that way. But we're going to try it this way. They've never tried it this way before. Went into uh, the MSI website, downloaded the BIOS file, had to rename it to msi.rom, make sure your USB stick is formatted to FAT32, uh, default allocation, and download the file on there, make sure just the BIOS file itself is there, not the text file, rename that to msi.rom, put it into the slot for your B550 uh, mag tomahawk, Okay, there's a BIOS slot right here. So put that in there and we're going to proceed with flashing the BIOS without the CPU, memory, and I've even taken out the M.2 drive. So that's where we're at. So at this point, all we have to do is turn the power on to the motherboard. So I'm going to do that now. And there's a flash BIOS button right here. So you're going to push that, hold that for about two seconds. You're going to see the lights should turn on and then we're just going to wait for the sequence to complete uh, power supply will turn itself on um, the light should flash in sequence should take no longer than about a minute at most but just wait till you're sure it's done and it should power itself down maybe it would power itself up we'll find out first time doing this and I'm praying that it works and um, yeah so here we go Power is on. I'm going to hold this in for just a couple of seconds. This should flash uh, red, I do believe, but we'll find out. One, two. And so it's flashing. You can see it's doing its thing here. So when this is all done, okay, see the lights on the motherboard have now turned on. We're just going to let it go through and do its thing. And yes. As I've said in before and other BIOS uh, updates and stuff such as that, um, it terrifies the heck out of me. Because if this goes wrong, um, I got a big old block of nothing. So if you see the video and it continues on later on, you'll know that this worked. So anyhow, this is where we're at. It's still flashing here. And when that stops flashing, it should be complete and we'll be able to finish. So that's what I'm waiting for. And you can see the lights will change and uh, at some point they'll... Uh, no, I'm just going with what I've heard before is that the lights will do some kind of flashing sequence. But when this is completely done here, that's when you're pretty much... That's what you're looking for. Because as long as it's reading from the USB, it's still doing something. So don't rush. Let it finish and do its thing. And again, no CPU, no memory, no connections to any drives or anything whatsoever. If you do that, this should work. So we'll come back and uh, we'll do the rest of our build and we'll verify that this actually worked. And I'm just going to put the 5000 series CPU back in, fire it up, hopefully, hopefully, We'll get a post and everything will be good. If not, well, uh, I don't know. Okay, so I waited a little bit longer and I didn't hear it sounded like the system restarting. And the one thing I've noticed is it stopped reading from the USB drive. So I think we're good to go. So I'm just going to remove my USB and power off our system and um, get on to the build. And hope the uh, hope it all went well. Okay, so everything is ready to go. CPU's back in. Didn't have to use the one I bought, so maybe I'll wind up returning it or just keeping it should I ever need it in the future. Um, so it's just a matter of powering it up, and hopefully on our little screen on the left here we will get a post. Crossing my fingers. All right, so. So far, so good. Does take a little bit on an AMD system, so 
to be expected. So let's focus right on our screen. Nice and close. I'm going to see that when it comes up. And I'm pretty sure you guys do too, because it's the only way to know if, if this actually worked. If it doesn't, oh, I just saw a flash of something there. That's a good sign. Now, this is the 5700G, so integrated graphics on the CPU. So, hopefully, we will get something up here. And you can see the screen's flashing. There we go. All right. 5700G with RAM graphics, DRAM, so it's on a default for the memory. It's recognized my keyboard and mouse. And the DVD drive I get in there, so F1 to run setup. So, sure, let's go in and run the setup. Success. Thank goodness. I cannot tell you how stressed I get. <laughs> We're doing this. All right, everybody, so sorry about the audio in the beginning of the video. Uh, it picks up every sound. I don't know where that water sound is coming from. Uh, never heard that before, so... Recording audio is always a fun thing sometimes. Anyhow, basically 5700G and the B550 Tomahawk motherboard um, needed the BIOS update. So I actually went and bought a other Ryzen processor. But then I'm like, man, I don't really want to use that. So I did it a way I've never done it before, which is no CPU, no memory. And no M.2 drive or anything like that in the system that could potentially cause any kind of errors or problems. Take out all the USB, everything. Only have your USB flash drive that you have your MSI ROM file on. Okay. Go through that process that I showed you and everything should work. As always, this is at your own risk. If you do this wrong or something goes wrong, power cuts out, anything like that, you will brick your motherboard, okay? Be patient while you're doing this. The process of starting the flashing of the BIOS and the actual completion took about two minutes. So wait a good three minutes, if you wish, or longer, however, whatever you're comfortable with, and then proceed and go ahead and do it. But with that caveat that something could go wrong, that's at your own risks, not on me. So I'm just trying to help and tell you my experience, that's all. Um, but anyway, if the video helps you out and you like it, hit that like. If you don't, you know what to do. If you're new here, think about subscribing. And hit that bell for future notifications for videos as they're coming up. Uh, I plan to do several different BIOS update type things uh, over time. I've done three now. This might be the fourth. Um, so anyway, if you like it, I hope you do. Hope it teaches you something. Hope it helps you out. Um, and now I'm going to be able to take the other CPU back if I don't decide to keep it. Because um, it's always another way of uh, updating your BIOS by just switching to an older one for CPU and then putting it back. I Another option if you're not comfortable with this whole thing. If you take your motherboard back to a computer shop, most computer shops today, now they're going to charge you about 50 bucks. 50 to 100, but 50 was where... I was sad. They'll do the update of the BIOS for you because they've got CPUs they can pop in. They can do it and it's done. So that is a cheaper option. Okay, just something to be aware of. So if you're not comfortable with doing this and you think you might, you know, the cost of the motherboard being bricked is not worth it, pay the 50 bucks to the computer shop, get them to do it for you, and you're good to go. All right, so thank you for watching. See you next time.